Hello and welcome back to the Immortal News Family. In today's heartfelt video, we bring to you the latest updates on the passing of some truly remarkable individuals within the last 24 hours. As a part of the Immortal News Family, we are committed to honoring and remembering those who have made a lasting impact in our lives and the world. If this video touches your heart, or if the stories of these extraordinary people have moved you, please show your respect and remembrance by giving this video a thumbs up. Thank you for joining us in this moment of reflection and tribute. Number 8. Mickey Gilbert, a revered figure in the entertainment industry known for his extraordinary contributions as an actor, stuntman, and rodeo performer, passed away at 88. Gilbert's career spanned several decades during which he became synonymous with high-risk stunts and memorable performances, particularly in collaboration with Robert Redford. Starting with Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid in 1969, Gilbert executed some of the most iconic stunts in cinema, including the daring leap off a cliff into water, a testament to his unparalleled skill and bravery. Gilbert's remarkable ability to bring thrilling action sequences to life led him to work on numerous films, showcasing his talent in Silver Streak, The Return of a Man Called Horse, and The Frisco Kid. His stunts were not just acts of physical prowess but also contributions to the storytelling that made the films unforgettable. In The Frisco Kid, for instance, his leap on horseback off a cliff into water remains one of the most talked about scenes, highlighting his commitment to his craft. Aside from his stunt work, Gilbert also made notable appearances, such as portraying the Ripper in the first episode of Kolchak, the Night Stalker, showcasing his versatility as a performer. Later in his career, he transitioned into a role as a stunt coordinator, leveraging his extensive experience to oversee and design action sequences further cementing his legacy in the industry. Gilbert's long-standing collaboration with Robert Redford, beginning in their high school years and continuing through films like The Old Man and the Gun, speaks volumes about the trust and respect he garnered from his peers. His death marks the end of an era for Hollywood's golden age of stunt work, leaving behind a legacy of awe-inspiring moments that will continue to inspire future generations of stunt performers and coordinators. Mickey Gilbert's contributions to film and his indomitable spirit in the face of danger will be remembered as hallmarks of a truly remarkable career in entertainment. Tributes to Mickey Gilbert Number 7. Sebastian Piñera, Chilean president passed away age 74, in a helicopter crash has left a profound void in the heart of Chile and the international community. Piñera, a central figure in Chile's contemporary political landscape, served two non-consecutive terms as president, from 2010 to 2014 and again from 2018 to 2022. His tenure was characterized by significant challenges, including major protests over social inequality, reflecting the deep-seated issues within the nation he sought to address. Pinera's death was confirmed by Interior Minister Carolina Toja in a national address, marking a somber moment for the country. President Gabriel Boric has ordered a state funeral and a period of national mourning, honoring Pinera's dedication to public service and his commitment to the nation's welfare. The helicopter crash, whose cause remains unclear, occurred in the Los Rios region amidst adverse weather conditions. Pinera's passing has elicited a wave of condolences from across the political spectrum, underscoring his impact not only in Chile but also across Latin America. Figures such as Ivan Duque, Colombia's former president, and Venezuelan opposition leader Antonio Ledesma have expressed their sorrow and highlighted Pinera's solidarity with democratic struggles in the region. Sebastian Pinera, a billionaire and a center-right politician, leaves behind a complex legacy. His first term was marked by Chile's successful rescue of 33 miners trapped underground, a moment that captured global attention. However, his second term faced significant unrest with calls for social reform and equality that led to widespread protests. Despite these challenges, Pinera's dedication to his country's progress remained unwavering. The loss of Sebastian Pinera is not just a moment of national mourning for Chile but also a reminder of the often turbulent journey of Latin American politics. His contributions to Chile's development and his role in the broader narrative of the region's struggle for democracy and equality will be remembered as part of his enduring legacy. Tributes to Sebastian Pinera. Number 6. 
Number 6. Toby Keith, the towering figure in country music known for his spirited anthems and a career spanning over three decades, passed away peacefully on February 5th at the age of 62. Diagnosed with stomach cancer in late 2021, Keith fought a valiant and dignified battle against the disease, surrounded by his loving family in his final moments. His passing marks the end of an era in American music, leaving behind a legacy filled with chart-topping hits, patriotic fervor, and a deep connection with fans across the globe. Born Toby Keith Koval on July 8, 1961 in Clinton, Oklahoma, Keith's musical journey was imbued with the rich tapestry of country life, hard work, and a steadfast commitment to his roots. From his early days playing in the honky-tonk circuit with the band Easy Money, to his rise as a solo artist with the breakout single Should Have Been a Cowboy, Keith's authentic storytelling and resonant baritone captured the heart of America. His debut song not only topped the country charts but also became the most played country song of the 1990s, setting the stage for a career that would see over 40 million albums sold worldwide. Keith's discography spans 19 studio albums, including the critically acclaimed Pull My Chain, Unleashed and Shockin' Y'all, each weaving narratives of love, life, and patriotism. His songs such as Courtesy of the Red, White, and Blue and American Soldier have become synonymous with American pride and resilience, earning him accolades and respect far beyond the country music sphere. In addition to his music career, Keith's ventures included acting, record producing, and successful business enterprises, showcasing his versatile talents and entrepreneurial spirit. As the music world mourns the loss of Toby Keith, his songs will continue to resonate, a testament to a life well lived and a career marked by passion, patriotism, and an unwavering connection to the American heartland. Tributes to Toby Keith. Number 5. Wilhelmina Fernandez, an American soprano whose remarkable talent and captivating performances passed away left a memorable mark on the arts. Born in Philadelphia in 1949, Fernandez's journey into music began with early training at the Philadelphia Academy of Vocal Arts, leading to a scholarship at the prestigious Juilliard School of Music in New York City. She catapulted into the spotlight with her operatic debut as Bess in Porgy and Bess for Houston Grand Opera, a role that took her on tours across the U.S. and Europe showcasing her extraordinary vocal prowess. Fernandez's European debut was equally memorable, playing Musetta in La Boheme, alongside opera luminaries Placido Domingo and Dame Kirite Kanawa. She mirrored this success with her debut at the New York City Opera, captivating audiences with the same role in 1982. Her career flourished as she took on some of opera's most challenging roles, including the title characters in Carmen, Carmen Jones, and Aida, performing in historic settings like Luxor and the Egyptian pyramids. Beyond the opera stage, Fernandez's voice reached a wider audience through her memorable performance in the 1981 film Diva by French director Jean-Jacques Benex. Though Diva remained her sole feature film appearance, her contributions to soundtracks like Someone to Watch Over Me and appearances on television solidified her status as a versatile and influential artist. Wilhelminia Fernandez's legacy is one of groundbreaking achievements and unforgettable performances, leaving a lasting legacy in the worlds of opera and film. Her passing is a profound loss to the arts, but her contributions will continue to inspire future generations of singers and performers. Tributes to Wilhelminia Fernandez Number 4. Asahi, one of professional wrestling's emerging talents, unfortunately died in a vehicle accident at the young age of 21, leaving the community in mourning. On February 1st, actress Girlze, the promotion where Asahi had lately moved in, made the tragic notification of her death. They honored her memory by postponing their planned concert for February 9th in remembrance of her passing. They also expressed their gratitude to the wrestling community and fans for their support during this trying time. When Asahi was just 14 years old, she entered the ring for Ice Ribbon in the esteemed Korakuen Hall, marking the beginning of her wrestling career. 
Her promising career took a crucial turn when she went against the famous Manami Toyota, a former All Japan Women's Champion. Asahi loves wrestling, but in 2020 she took a short break from the sport to concentrate on juggling her studies and athletic goals. In 2021, she entered the ring with fresh vigor and resolve. Asahi made the daring decision to switch from Ice Ribbon to Actress Girl Z in 2023. She had originally planned to use the switch as a three to six month temporary loan, but she ultimately decided to accept the latter promotion permanently, opening a new chapter in her professional life. Sadly, on January 31st, her last game was played just one day before she passed away. There is a loss in the hearts of Asahi's supporters, associates and the wrestling community as a whole due to her untimely death. Her desire to manage her academic obligations, her bravery in embracing change and new chances, and her commitment to the sport even at such a young age tell volumes about her character and her future. Even though his legacy is short, Asahi will always serve as an inspiration to aspiring wrestlers and serve as a reminder to everyone of the fleeting nature of life and the value of living life to the fullest. Tributes to Asahi Number 3. Lara Lynn McWilliams, a pioneering figure in the video game industry, passed away leaving behind a legacy of innovation and inspiration. Born in Vincenza, Italy, McWilliams carved out a remarkable career that saw her at the forefront of designing massively multiplayer online games that captivated millions of players worldwide. Her work as the creative director for Free Realm set a new benchmark for virtual worlds targeted at teens and tweens earning her a spot alongside Sony Online President John Smedley as one of the most influential people in MMOs by Massive Online Gaming in 2010. McWilliams's contributions extended beyond Free Realms. She led design and production efforts on games for major entertainment companies like Disney and DreamWorks, showcasing her versatility and creativity. Notably, she served as the lead designer for Full Spectrum Warrior at Pandemic Studios and collaborated with figures such as John Singleton and Snoop Dogg on the cancelled game Fear and Respect. Her ability to blend gaming with storytelling and popular culture underscored her unique talent in the industry. Recognized for her impact on gaming and her role in promoting diversity and inclusion within the industry, McWilliams was honored as one of the top women in MMOs in 2010 and included in the Gamma Sutra 20 for Women in Games. Her insights into the development and success of Free Realms, shared in a post-mortem published in Game Developer magazine, provided valuable lessons for fellow developers. McWilliams' academic background, with a BA in psychology from Vassar College and a JD from St. Louis University School of Law, informed her approach to game design, emphasizing user experience and engagement. In 2021, her extraordinary contributions were celebrated with a Lifetime Achievement Award at the 21st Game Developers' Choice Awards, a fitting tribute to her enduring impact on the craft of game development. Laralyn McWilliams leaves behind a lasting legacy that will continue to inspire future generations of game designers and developers. Her pioneering work and dedication to the video game industry have left an enduring mark on the world of gaming. Tributes to Laralyn McWilliams Number 2. The art world has lost a luminous presence with the passing of German photographer Helga Paris at the age of 85. Known for her evocative portrayals of daily life in East Germany, Paris's work offered a window into the soul of a divided nation, capturing the essence of its people and the vibrancy of its streets. Born in Golnau just before the outbreak of World War II, Paris navigated a childhood marked by the tumult of post-war Germany, an experience that deeply influenced her artistic vision. After completing her education in fashion design, Paris's journey took a pivotal turn towards photography, a medium she approached with a self-taught passion and skill inherited from her aunts. By the late 1960s, she was deeply immersed in the East German artistic scene, a period that honed her eye for the stark, unvarnished truth of human experience. Her early professional work ranged from documenting slaughtering in Thuringia to fashion photography, 
showcasing her versatility and keen observational skills. The 1980s marked a focus shift towards the people and streetscapes of Berlin and despite initial challenges Halle, her dedication to capturing the raw, unfiltered essence of her subjects, even in the face of hostility, underscored her commitment to the power of photographic storytelling. Paris's work during this time, particularly her Houses and Faces, HAL 1983-1985 exhibition, although controversial, remains a poignant testament to her artistic integrity and vision. Surviving the tumultuous changes of 1989-90 and the subsequent reunification of Germany, Paris's photographs gained newfound significance, serving as a historical archive of a bygone era. A member of the Berlin Academy of Arts since 1996, her contributions to photography and the arts were widely recognized, culminating in her acclaimed Self Images 1981-1988 exhibition in 2003. Helga Paris's passing is a profound loss to the world of art and photography. Her legacy, however, endures through her powerful body of work, which continues to inspire and move audiences around the globe. Tributes to Helga Paris. Today's top headlines. News 1. Kate Garraway returned to ITV's Good Morning Britain, expressing admiration for her children's extraordinary bravery after the death of her husband, Derek Draper. Draper, who faced severe complications from COVID, passed away in January. Garraway shared touching details of her family's strength during this difficult time, including her daughter Darcy's poignant words to her father, and her role as a pallbearer at his funeral. The service, attended by notable figures like Sir Tony Blair and Sir Elton John, was held in the same church where Garraway and Draper married in 2005. Garraway also acknowledged the overwhelming support from viewers, celebrities like David and Victoria Beckham, and even the royal family. As she prepares to resume her role on the show, she joked about looking forward to a blow dry and asked for patience affirming her readiness to reconnect with the world. Reflecting on the importance of caring for loved ones, Garraway highlighted the need for better support systems and called caregiving an incredible and honorable responsibility. News 2. Michael J. Fox has redefined his 33-year battle with Parkinson's disease, calling it a gift that spurred him to make a significant impact through his foundation. Diagnosed at just 29, the beloved Back to the Future star didn't let the challenging diagnosis deter his spirit. Instead, he established the Michael J. Fox Foundation for Parkinson's research in 2000, aiming to find a cure and improve therapies for those living with the condition. Speaking on BBC Breakfast, Fox shared insights from his documentary, Still, a Michael J. Fox movie, highlighting his journey of resilience and optimism. Despite the hardships, Fox views his diagnosis as an opportunity to contribute positively, earning admiration for his unwavering positivity and dedication to helping others. His foundation continues to lead in Parkinson's research, embodying Fox's commitment to turning his personal challenge into a beacon of hope for many. News 3. Jim Rowinski, a prominent figure in college basketball history and former professional player, has passed away at the age of 63. Known for his powerful presence as a center for the Purdue Boilermakers, Rowinski left an indelible mark on the game. At Purdue, he was a driving force behind the team's success, leading them to significant victories and earning first-team All-Big Ten honors. His senior year saw the Boilers clinch a co-Big Ten conference title and a spot in the 1984 NCAA tournament. Rowinski's professional career included stints with the Detroit Pistons, Philadelphia 76ers, and Miami Heat. Despite a brief NBA career, his impact on the court and dedication to basketball remained evident. His passing is a great loss to the basketball community, and he will be remembered for his contributions to Purdue's storied athletics and the professional basketball landscape. News 4. A tragic accident occurred at Radford Studios in Studio City, where a crew member, specifically a rigger, 
working on the set of Marvel Studios' upcoming series Wonder Man, died after falling from a catwalk. The incident happened while the series was not actively filming. The Los Angeles Police Department confirmed the unfortunate death, but has not released the name of the individual involved. Marvel Studios expressed their condolences, stating, Our thoughts and deepest condolences are with his family and friends, and our support is behind the investigation into the circumstances of this accident. The production of Wonder Man, featuring Yahya Abdul-Mateen II, is anticipated to begin next month, following delays due to industry strikes. The series is expected to explore the story of Simon Williams, a character with a complex history of rivalry and alliance with the Avengers. News 5. Indianapolis Colts owner Jim Ursay recently provided an eagerly awaited health update to NFL fans and the sports world. Known for his distinct presence and outspoken nature, Ursay's prolonged silence had sparked concern among Colts enthusiasts and the broader NFL community. Breaking his silence, Ursay shared news of his health situation via X, offering some reassurance to fans anxious about his ability to continue leading the team. While specifics of his health and future involvement with the Colts remain under wraps, the update signals a positive direction for Ursay's recovery. In his absence, Ursay's daughters, Carly Ursay Gordon, Kaylin Jackson, and Casey Foyt, have been managing the team's affairs, ensuring the Colts remain on course. Jim Ursay's unique approach to ownership, often marked by a willingness to challenge conventional norms and league authority, makes his potential return a significant point of interest for the NFL community. As details about Ursay's health continue to emerge, Colts fans and the sports world alike hold out hope for his full recovery and return to the helm of the team's operations. Number one, Jose Delbo, an esteemed Argentine comics artist whose prolific career spanned several decades and continents, passed away at the age of 90 in February. Delbo, born on December 9, 1933, began his professional journey in the comics industry at the tender age of 16, quickly establishing himself as a formidable talent within the Argentine comics scene. His work on the Pancho Negro series marked the beginning of a storied career that would see him leave a memorable mark on both DC Comics and Marvel Comics, among others. Facing political unrest in Argentina, Delbo relocated first to Brazil and then to the United States in the mid-1960s, where he expanded his repertoire to include work for Charlton Comics, Dell Comics, and Western Publishing's Gold Key Comics. His versatility shone through in his adaptations of popular TV shows such as The Brady Bunch, Hogan's Heroes, and The Twilight Zone into comic form. His favorites among these projects included The Monkees, The Lone Ranger, and an adaptation of the Yellow Submarine film, showcasing his ability to capture the essence of diverse narratives. Delbo's tenure at DC Comics began in 1969, but he is perhaps best known for his defining work on the Wonder Woman title from 1976 to 1981. During this period, he, alongside writer Martin Pasco, skillfully aligned the comic book series with the then-popular Wonder Woman television series. His contributions to the Wonder Woman lore, including the reanimation of Steve Trevor and the introduction of new villains, have had a lasting impact on the character's mythology. Transitioning to Marvel Comics in the mid-1980s, Delbo continued to impress with his work on Thundercats, the Transformers, and the creation of Brute Force with Simon Furman. Beyond his comic book achievements, Delbo dedicated himself to nurturing the next generation of artists, teaching at the Kubert School, and later running a cartoon camp in Florida. In 2013, Delbo's contributions to the comic book industry were honored with an Inkpot Award at the San Diego Comic-Con International a fitting recognition for an artist who had devoted his life to the craft of storytelling through comics. Jose Delbo leaves behind a legacy as a beloved figure in the comics community, remembered for his enduring creations and his commitment to education in the arts. Tributes to Jose Delbo